Peter, thanks so much for joining us. It was a very busy week for you guys, very emotional week as well. Would you about to leave the club after eight and a half wonderful years? How are you feeling? How are you doing this week? Uh, how I'm feeling? I, to be honest, not. I don't really know. So, um, one hand is, uh, how can I say, the football job is done somehow. Yes, we have a game, but uh, away the pressure is gone, say it like this. And now, uh, yeah, we are preparing for this emotional moment, of course. Um, how you said, eight and a half wonderful, intense, uh, great years at the end uh, are coming now to an end. And um, like it is, it's time to say goodbye. And that's never easy. I know, absolutely. I imagine it'll be an emotional weekend for a lot of people. Um, on, you mentioned eight and a half years ago when you first arrived here. When you, went, when you first got wind, of course, that Jürgen might, might be taking over. Like, do you remember, can you take us back to then how that was, how you felt? Like, obviously, you didn't know other offers, but Jürgen and yourself decided this was the club for you. Can you take us back to that? What was the decision made there? Uh, yeah, so it was interesting. Eh? So um, when we left Dortmund, uh, Jürgen promised, I need one year off. So one year, nothing. Okay, so uh, me and my family, we made the plans. Okay, it's a good idea. We agree. Uh, we moved away from uh, Dortmund to my hometown, uh, we rented a house, uh, we put the boys in school and I was ready for one year. Yeah? So, and <laughs> then straight in October, uh, he called me, uh, listen, hmm, uh, maybe there's the opportunity going to Liverpool. So, yeah, interesting, but uh, in July. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it can be a bit earlier. So this was um, changing the ideas, of course, a little bit. Uh, but at the end, uh, we all know it was a the right timing and it was a good and right decision. So um, how was it when we came in? We had, of course, uh, our idea how we want to play football. We had, of course, uh, the idea um, to win trophies uh, and um, yeah, so this is what we tried and then the journey started. Um, let's say if we are starting this way, uh, you have to be somehow patient, of course, as well. So we didn't want to come in uh, as uh, us, as the guys uh, who know everything, who are knowing every, uh, everything better than all the rest. So, uh, we, our attitude was as well that we wanted to learn about English football, about uh, different football cultures way, uh, as well. So the, the English way, uh, how, how, it, how, how is it? What do we know from Germany? Uh, how can we adapt? What do we want to keep and what uh, do we want to add new? Uh, and then bringing things together means um, being successful means you have to be patient. Even if you have the big targets, winning the Premier League, winning the Champions League, this is what we thought. Yes, it will be possible one day, maybe. Uh, but A, there's no guarantee and it doesn't work from uh, uh, today till tomorrow so um, means your definition of success needs to be um, adapted as well so and being ready for these small steps but uh, keep going and keep improving and this is keep learning and this is what we tried over the whole eight and a half years so um, yes of course um, the football job the game doesn't change uh, a lot, but the details are making it interesting. And so this development, this is what we wanted. Uh, so getting better and better and better. Um, uh, create not different ideas, but add on, uh, keep developing, keep improving. I thought because at that point you're taking you October, so there's no transfer window. You're effectively managing somebody else's squad for a, a, a year almost. But then from, I'm just looking from that point on to the team that wins everything, that you know, wins the Premier League, wins the Champions League. Did you have a clear roadmap yourselves in Jürgen? Was like how we get to that point? Because some of the players you kept, you kept Jordan, you kept James Milner, Divock Origi stayed, but then there was a lot of transition as well. Like, was there a clear blueprint of, right, we want to be there, I think Jürgen said, four years or whatever? Was that always in the mind from when you start? Like, how we get there to there? Yeah, no, no, I think it's it's not planable like that. Eh? So, so you want to go step by step, see the situation, see, give the players uh, you're working uh, with as well the chance to develop to get better to understand the idea to fulfill the system to um, yeah to improve uh, our way or creating a new style as well so and then after one season you have a look okay this was good here we need to improve uh, what is possible on the transfer market and going step by step I, I 
don't think it's possible to say, okay, in four years we win this or that. Uh, you never know for this. Uh, all the opponents are much too strong as well. And, you know, football is a crazy game at the end of the day. <laughs> and uh, this is not planable. But, of course, with the idea getting better and better and better, if possible, uh, grow as a team, as a club. And this is what we did continuously. And then... Thanks God, we were a few times lucky to win. Something. Not lucky good. <laughs> Not lucky good, definitely. There's a yeah, there's a, a couple of things I was going to speak to you about in terms of players who you took over in that team then. Because a lot of those players who were right who were there in 2015, they stayed through the, the, the successful years, but probably in different kind of roles. So for example, Jordan goes like a number six role where he'd been playing midfield, you had Coutinho playing left and then centre. I was just wondering what when you arrived here, was the plan always to do these kind of things? Or did you have to come and look at what you had and then make those kind of decisions? Because we're looking from afar is different, obviously, than being with them every day. Yeah, of course. This is part of the development. Eh? So we're talking about football systems, our, our idea, uh, what we played in, in, in Dortmund was 4 4 one, one. Uh, This is close to the basic stuff. So it's a 4 4 one, one. It's a... Uh, yeah, four four two, but this ball orientated uh, defending. This is what we wanted. This is our our DNA. Uh, of course, including good possession possession game, but um, by being dominant by defending. So um, this is uh, yeah, what was our idea always. Uh, so. Um, the idea, of course, we want to score for that, as simple <laughs> it sounds, for that you need the ball. And we, our idea was we want to win the ball as early as possible, as high as possible on the pitch. Yeah? And for this, uh, you need a uh, pressing, uh, high pressing attitude as well, but you have to defend your goal as well. Um, and then give space for development and development of course was uh, not being only a defending good defending team and win and quick transitions no uh, being dominant means as well you need the ball uh, in, in possession so uh, at the same time we never uh, wanted to control the game only for controlling we just wanted to prepare our attacks and um, because our attitude always was as well that football needs to be entertainment. So uh, winning the game somehow 1-0, uh, this is even boring to watch and we <laughs> we don't want that. So we want action <laughs> on the pitch if you want. So it means uh, full defending with everything we have, the moment we have the ball. Uh, is it possible to attack the goal quick or is it necessary to, to control it first and to prepare the next? Uh, next attack the next finish and yeah so this is this was the idea and like that uh, we kept building 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 uh, and developing until today i would say we still try to improve absolutely yeah. that team like, like i said we went back for won the premier league in the champions league unbelievable team one of the best teams i've ever seen of liverpool saving my era you mentioned before the attack and prowess and that front three that you guys put together because it was interesting obviously Sadio Sainz he plays a season on the right and then Mo Sainz and he gets shifted over to the left can you tell us the thinking behind that because from outside looking I was thinking Sadio one player of the season he was the best player and then you sign somebody else and move him to the other side Bobby's up front can you let us know the thought process behind them decisions because it was fascinating at the time and even now obviously the results were borne out yeah 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 so yeah bringing Mo in was the possibility to sign him and having a winger who's cutting inside and attack, attacking the goal with his left foot coming from the outside to the inside and the other way around with uh, Sadio as well and, and, and Bobby as the connector uh, dropping into midfield going away from the from the center half gives them something to search over is it now for the midfielder to mark him or do I need to go out of the last lines or creating gaps uh, using free spaces and then of course uh, the ultra quick speed <laughs> of our two wingers was a pretty good idea on top of that these guys um, yeah developed into pressing monsters on top and and, and yeah this is why uh, I'll I and Probably everybody liked them so much, they are and were ready to work their socks off defending for the team, knowing uh, the better we help the team, the earlier we win the ball, uh, the better and easier it is to score, of course, as well, and use our speed. And this is what these guys did really brilliantly. And, and Bobby Formino 
wow, uh, what a natural <laughs> talent he was on the pitch. Uh, so just instinctively being on the right spots, doing the right things, pressing, running for three or four guys and, uh, and being happy uh, for everybody who scores. Uh, and yeah, so a fantastic player, unbelievable. Fantastic team, I was going to say. You, I, I heard you say where your job was to prepare the team for the games and you saw that as your role. I'm just looking back to some of those big games at that time. For example, we'd just been beating 3-0 in Barcelona, for example. Yeah. And then I, everyone thought we played quite well. But how, how do you then go about preparing the team 3-0 down to face yeah. Lionel Messi, Luis Suarez, all those world stars in a game that they have to win for or whatever? Like, how do you go about that as a from a preparation point of view? Was there anything yeah. you learned from the new Camp that you tweaked? Obviously, injuries as well. It was, it was a chaotic couple of days. Was yeah, so um, was interesting because we left the pitch in Barcelona, uh, lost three nil. I believe Barcelona had two more opportunities to score, four and five. And um, one of the last actions of the game, I saw the Barcelona manager. They missed one chance, and he got on the floor. So, oh no, unlucky, <laughs> we didn't score. <laughs> So this was one sign for me that he was not sure about uh, the result because the result was not a fair result. Uh, we played well, not bad. They scored the goals. And um, yes, of course, but we, we, we left the pitch going to the dressing room and everybody was really angry, disappointed somehow. And uh, we felt, okay, this was not the right result. And we, in that moment, in that minute, uh, um, decided, okay, uh, that's not it yet. Uh, we will face each other <laughs> in one week. Uh, welcome to Liverpool. And um, uh, so preparing the game, of course, was, was challenging because Mo injured, I believe, Bobby injured as well. Um, so, and there was this idea, okay, what can we do? So first of all, you have to play a fantastic game. Yeah? So thinking about scoring four goals um, and you think, okay, everybody runs forward, <laughs> won't work out as well. So against Barcelona especially, you need a top performance in defending. Yeah? So uh, that was one way to prepare. On the other hand side, it was a bit special because we felt as well, okay, Something has to click in the games, there must be a way. So um, I went through different Barcelona games uh, looking, okay, what happened if they lost away games? Uh, so is there a way uh, to find something? And I found the year before uh, they went out of the Champions League, didn't win it and lost in Rome after winning the home game 3-1, I guess, not sure about. Uh, and they lost in Rome uh, 3-0. So I went, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Let's have a look at uh, what happened. Uh, and yeah, I found a few interesting moves, obviously. So Barcelona confident. Uh, but in that game, they lost because, um, yeah, Messi didn't lost uh, the pleasure on the game in Rome. They were defending them hard. He was not happy with his team. Uh, they were under pressure, they started kicking long balls and messages with his body language. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, I'm <laughs> you want me to head a ball <laughs> three meters in the air, give it to me. And uh, yeah, step by step by step, they lost it. And Rome at the end um, won three nil uh, with a corner. Ah, with a corner, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> uh, scoring an early goal, of course, as well. It in Dzeko scored one after eight minutes, and I thought, oh, look, this is they didn't, uh, so they went step by step in that game, and this can be or it's the only way uh, we can do it as well. And and this is uh, uh, what you feel inside. But uh, you have to bring it down to a couple of points. Uh, you cannot give all your information to, <laughs> to the players. Oh, no, 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 it has to be bam, 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 one, two, three. Yeah, so, and especially Divock Origi, we thought, okay, give him the role of, of, of Edin Dzeko, talking to him here, listen, we need this, we so need you, that. Did you base it on, so you, watched, you said we're going to couple up room, did effectively, and you're going to be like hard Dzeko to, to Divock, and, and it works? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, literally, yes. I, I showed him a couple of things. And uh, look, and he was the one, he scored two goals. Eh? So this is something we need uh, tomorrow as well. 
So, and yeah, uh, but believing that it is possible was the most important thing. And then being ready and to go out to start this game and yeah, uh, let it happen. So, uh, and this, it came true. Yeah? So, uh, we cannot say we planned it, uh, but we made it possible. <laughs> Nobody planned to take a corner quick. No, that wasn't in, that wasn't in your, in your plan. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we had a special idea, yeah, I remember we had a special idea because we saw um, Barcelona cha is changing the setup every time if you take an outswinger, so from the right side, right foot, or an inswinger, so they change uh, their positioning a little bit. And we said, okay, give them something to think. Um, we Each corner we take different. Yeah? So one time inswinger, one time outswinger, inswinger, outswinger. So, and this was exactly the moment, if you, if you remember, uh, Shakiri was the one to take it with the left foot. He left the ball. Uh, <laughs> they switched off because they thought, ah, now Trent outswinger. So, and you can see the Barcelona players were looking there, oh, taking a break. Then we do it quick. Yeah? So it was not planned, but somehow uh, made it possible. Absolutely. Thank you. That's, that's amazing. In, in, fascinating insight. So, yeah, since then, obviously, we've gone on to have a, lot, a, a transition within the team. As well, obviously, eight years you're going to get that type of transition, and it's worked out quite well. Obviously, you've won numerous trophies. What's that like for you as a coach? You've got to identify players who stays, who goes, and then implement a new system with the new team. You've changed lots of things around. Is that like a fun part of the job for you, almost like refreshing and going again? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it must be so uh, to keep it interesting and, and staying a long time in the club um, and to talk about football and for the players, all these meetings, it's, I don't, I don't know how many games, so you cannot say every time the same. So you have to find a way uh, to bring something new in to, to make, to, uh, to keep it interesting somehow. And uh, even this is uh, your job at the moment you win a trophy, uh, you know that you have been uh, a role model for other teams. So, and the, the upcoming opponents, uh, they are sitting in there offices and living rooms and think, okay, uh, what they can do, we can do as well. <laughs> so this is uh, what is forcing you uh, to keep learning, to keep developing, to keep improving. So, and this is of course not easy when you, are the, if you have been on the highest point, uh, on the peak of your football, and then you come on the 1st of July and say, gentlemen, <laughs> we have to do better. Interesting, and this is the challenge, of course, and not easy. And, but this is what we tried, and like this, uh, hopefully, the time for eight and a half years for the players <laughs> was not too long. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.